So in yesterday's video, we put new door speakers in the wagon, front and rear of the Kenwoods, and I took out the factor ones. And everyone's trying to tell me, since I didn't use this plastic piece to push the speaker further forward, that my windows in my wagon will no longer work. So I'm just here to show you guys that if we hold this, the window will go down. Oh, look at that. They work. All right, so moving on from the wagon here, we're gonna hop in the old girl over here. Also, if you need your fenders rolled or any body work, hit me up. I got you. So I know there's been a ton of new subs on the channel, which is amazing. Thank you guys so much. If you are new, welcome to the channel. Um, but I'm pretty sure most of you haven't seen this car unless you went back into like further videos, but this car has been covered up for the past, I don't know, three, four weeks maybe. Uh, this is little old Miley. This is my 1997 Volkswagen Jetta. This is actually my first car. Bought this car back in 2011. Contrary to the bumpers, this is not a Vento. This is actually an American spec Jetta. Out there is an actual Euro spec Vento. But this is a little low Miley. Uh, she still does need an axle, but other than that, she's good to go. I have a few pieces I've been wanting to put in the car, so we'll do that real quick. She do be looking good. It's funny, I saw people ask me why I did a VR6 swap in this car versus like a lighter 1.8 turbo. And let me just, uh, let me show y'all the reason why we love the VR6 around here. Okay, let me just give y'all a little, little lesson. If you're not a VR6, uh, VR6 fan, let me just, let me just give you this. You hear that? That is why the VR6 is superior. been a minute since we've had this car running. Actually, let's go ahead and pull the Vento here next to a uh, little Miley over there. I have not started the little Vento in quite a while and I parked it like, why did I do that? Oh, this thing has like thorns on, look at this thing. The most aggressive plant ever. I'm gonna go from this side actually. I don't feel like getting ate up today. Well, let's just get up in here. That's the wrong way. There it is. Okay, go from this side. Let's jump over here real quick. Ugh. Okay. Does she still run? She should. The little, the little Vento. Okay, there she is. Let's get her moved over there. I forgot this clutch, like this pedal, like my foot's to the floor that much. You can see that, a little movement there? That's all it takes before this car starts pulling. It's crazy. Let's put her over here. We'll back her up a little bit. Yeah, a little side-by-side -side action. That should be good. I've actually been meaning to do this. It's kind of cool. I mean, this car is getting gutted for parts, but it's pretty cool to say that I actually have a US spec Jetta and a Euro Vento at the same time. That is pretty cool. Now, granted, my car does have Vento bumpers on it, but it's still a Jetta. But it's cool to see them side-by-side. -side. Very, very cool. So this is a 1.8. Now, obviously, this car has been a VR6 swap. It was a 2-liter, but still cool to see them um, right next to each other. Now, this car is a Vento GLX or CLX? This one is the CLX model, which is the 1.8, and it has, like, electronic locks and AC and other stuff like that. But the plan for today that I want to do, so in my car, so we come inside here. This dash, this is the Mark 3.5 dimple dash. You can see why they call it a dimple dash. This is my favorite dash for a Mark III. This one over here, which is like the, the normal Mark III dash, I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of this texture, so it's just not my favorite. I much prefer 
this one but if you look down here so this piece and this piece here that's my factory um original dash pieces and i painted them black when i put this dash in but you can see it's starting to scuff a little bit and the original that beaver color that tan horrible color but it's starting to show through again so i want to swap this one and this one out for the euro pieces my car is a very mix of american pieces and euro pieces i quite like it and also my uh my piece is missing like almost every mark three so you come in here get your little uh little flathead and then common mark three things it happens so today this one's going out for the euro one which so latches over here and this is going out for the much smaller um euro little knee pad or whatever you want to call it i think they both up the same i know the glove box does these this one's just a bit different shaped and has a little panel here but this one's actually factory black whereas mine is painted and kind of chipping now so this and then not this one but i have another one that's going to go in my car just little touches here and there i was also planning on possibly putting this style e-brake um console into my car but i actually prefer my american one better just because it has the little cover here i like this piece so I'm gonna keep that. I just like that my car is not all Vento or all Jetta. It's just the pieces from each one that I like the most. And we now have uh, this car full of just pieces from like literally all over the world. But I prefer the Euro bumpers compared to the American bumpers, but I prefer the American fenders that have no light, like how these ones do. And it's just like a smooth, no lights inside at all. Cause the American bumper has a light here and the Euro one has a light here, but mine has nothing at all. So I like that look better. These cars are just cool. Cause you can pull pieces from like so many different things and just mix match and however you want it to be. So I've really just gone through and put all the pieces that are my favorite on this car. Like I love the antenna delete in the fender. I just like how that looks. And then obviously the door cars are mixed between uh, TDI, 92 Vento and just so many pieces. It's cool. These cars are a lot of fun just to take pieces from everything and just make it however you want it. I was gonna use my spare glove box that I have downstairs, but since I have a key for this one if i ever want to lock it for whatever reason i can so we'll use this one for my car so removing the glove box out of mark three is a very easy process you need one tool which is a phillips head screwdriver you have one there one way down there and then you have three on the inside one two and three and again easier access to these ones you need to pop the lower door here off this hinge so you kind of just press it on the sides and do that so now it hangs down like this and now you can get your screwdriver straight up and in. I gotta say, I'm really excited to actually have a glove box with a proper functioning little latch there. I mean, until it breaks, cause it's a Mark III and those latches always break. The day, funny story, the day I bought my car, the guy was trying to open the glove box. So it was there and he snapped it off and he said, oh, here's 50 bucks back. So I was supposed to pay 1750 for my car, but I paid 1700 cause the guy snapped my handle literally <laughs> in front of me. So little, Fun story about Miley. So with all our screws out, we simply just kind of pull forward and there comes our entire box. Now, be very careful if you ever buy one of these for your US spec car, because to my knowledge, every US spec Mark III has AC. Where over here in Europe, a ton of the Mark III's don't have AC. So if you're buying one of these boxes, make sure they specify that it's for an AC car, because this portion here is much smaller. The non-AC ones go to about here, because there's nothing, none of the AC stuff is in the way. Um, and you have to cut it, it won't fit your car properly. So make sure you get an AC specific glove box or parts or shelf just so it's the smaller backside and actually fits in your car and just to give you guys a complete visual so you don't get lied to this one here is an ac glove box this one here is a non-ac glove box look at the back side that is a difference so if you have an ac car this will not fit until you cut like all that out and they have a big hole and it's not going to be right so make sure you get the right one for your car and then over here i have a non-ac parcel self same thing it has the larger backside and the one i have in my savoy has the ac one and it's like right here which honestly this thing is basically useless at least with the glove box you have like this portion to hold things whereas this there's no like door portion and it's like right here it's basically useless you can put like a pen or something small in there but there's your differences all right back to this car you can see my American spec glove box with its missing handle and all chipping. I painted this with, I want to say it was black gloss trim and fabric or trim and vinyl paint, maybe six or seven years ago. It's been a long time. I mean, it held up great. This section all looks pretty OEM, but just from getting hit and just getting older, you can see it's just flaking right off. So 
that'll go out and we'll have us a nice cool euro glove box in our car just adding two more of the vento jetta mix of pieces in here and then for some reason i have a looks like a headlight eight millimeter on that side this side has an actual that's an actual screw what's inside here let's see what we got up in here if i can get in there we have nothing there nothing there and one there and then you can see the original color that beaver tan is just it wasn't a good color not a good not a good choice it's kind of funny because a minute ago i was saying i wasn't sure why this was missing so many screws now i remember when i pulled this out to paint it when i would put it back in in typical fashion i was like you know what it doesn't need all the screws to go back in it'll be fine with three and that's where we're at now there is a lot of stuff in here i need to go through this look at that that's from uh from fridays good old tgi fridays this is old this has been in my car for at least eight or nine years. Look, there's two of them. That's hilarious. What else we got in here? That is insurance that I don't have anymore. And some receipts. Always had to have fuses. Then I had like my title and that kind of stuff in here. But, oh, there's another one. Look at that. Good old, I, I miss Fridays. Fridays is delicious. French onion soup is the best thing you, man, now I'm hungry. All of our screws are out, so we should be able to pull forward. And there she is our american style glove box next to our euro style one the only difference is just the latches on the side versus in the middle and it's actually like factory black versus painted but that's all it is but cool little touch and then for those of you who might want the part number on the euro one here we have one h1 857922c made in germany and the american spec one we have one hm 880-890 and this one was made in Canada so there's your part numbers two other things I want to note real quick that I just noticed one the Euro glove box is much lighter you guys can't tell on camera obviously but the American one the door here like listen to this compared to this one and again So the top half, so this piece and this piece are the same, um, but this piece is like hollow and very, very light, where this one's just like, it's thick. It's a very, very solid piece. Also, I want to note, let me flip this real quick, on when I was trying to mount the Euro one in my car, it wasn't fitting just right. So looking at the American one, this portion here has these little cutouts right there that allows it to go up over this bit of dash and sit far enough up whereas the euro one it's just flat so what i'm gonna have to do is go through and cut little recesses in this one and this one and that one so it matches like this then it'll fit properly but it's an easy modification all right so the new glove box is officially in the car you can see it right there and i'm not gonna lie to you guys like some people might there's only two screws holding this thing up and i'll explain why so there's this one down here one and that one over there too so i trim the top like on this one but with the euro one it seems like where these screw holes mount up to the original dash it seems like the american ones come farther back um whereas this one you can see there's no screws in there for whatever reason it's just not high enough up to reach the metal um and no screws but you can see very very sturdy it's not moving at all not really going anywhere so one two and it's all tabbed up here so it's in there nice and tight not going to go nowhere but there it is. So if you want to put a Euro glove box in your car, you have to make some little trims right here and then just deal with two screw holes. Or if you want to get longer screws and make new holes, you can do that, but it works good enough as is. Up next, we're swapping out this piece here and swapping it for the European one. I believe it's just one screw there and one on that side. And I believe the top section here kind of hooks in and the whole thing should drop out. Two screws out and there you go. This one has like the, um, the rubbery, like the soft touch feel to it, where I'm pretty sure the Vento one's like all just a hard plastic. And then over here on the Vento, this one you can see is a bit more square in this section, and it has this cool little panel down here that you can press the buttons and it pops off. I can't do it with one hand, but that pops off, so cool little touch on my car. The European lower piece here also has this little piece that comes off in the front that covers these two screws. I don't know if my car's gonna have a spot for this to screw in. Um, it still has little tabs up here that kind of hook in and hold it, but I don't know if I'm gonna have this or not, but we'll see. Give you guys another little side-by-side -side between the American lower dash piece versus the European one. This one's actually made of three pieces. You have this piece, the main piece, and this cover, whereas the American one's just one piece and there's a separate piece in the bottom that covers like your fuse box, but mine's already gone on my car. This one's that soft touch material again, all squishy-like and much heavier, where this one's just straight plastic. 
and kind of that uh, scratchy material, but it's way, way lighter. And I'll try and find you a part number if I can. Um, right there, let's see. This one, 1H185793, made in Austria. And this one, if there is one, which there might not be, or maybe underneath all this uh, spray foam stuff. Nope, no part number for you guys. It does say Germany right there on that little tab piece, but I don't see a part number, so. No part number for you guys. I can't see them, but I can hear them. They have the uh, the F-16s from Spang Dom over here again today. And man, they sound so cool. I want to go for a ride in a fighter jet so bad you have no idea. They sound so cool. All right, let's see if this thing's gonna fit in our car. It may or may not, we'll see. Now, can I already tell you, I don't have the spot up here for this top panel to screw in, but it has these little hooks, so I should be able to hook that in. If I can do this, I'll put you guys right there, maybe, can you see? Hope it didn't fall over, let's see. So these should hook up like this. Kind of like that, looks like. Oh, this may work. Let's see. So I'll show you. Oh, sorry. So this might work. I'm going to put the bottom two screws in. I might have to get fancy with the zip ties, but I think it'll work. I had a look at this car again, but my car actually has this screw hole. I don't have that one, but I have this one. I'll show you guys. So I should get one of the top screws on, which should be more than enough to actually hold it onto the car. You can see right there, right there. So I can use that one. This one doesn't have it, but this one, that one, and that one should be more than enough and also hooked into here, so no problem. And she's in. So you can fit a Euro lower dash piece on your American dash. Now I'm gonna have to go through and adjust this side. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right here. It keeps wanting to fall down. It doesn't want to stay all the way up. It's making a bit of a gap right here. But once it's all the way up, it'll sit perfectly. So I'm gonna have to pull this back off real quick and either maybe cut this piece so it hooks on better or maybe add a screw. We're almost there. So new lower piece on this side, new glove box. I actually like some better because now it's closer to me. Not that it really was that much further before, but kind of cool that it's just more towards the driver. All right, so you can see I have this side over here sitting nice and flush as it's supposed to and it can't fall no more. So what I did, I moved this screw mounting position up just a little bit. And then over here, there's a little tab behind this piece that I was pushing against the metal, so it was sitting kind of weird, um, but I sawed it through properly, so that's good now. And then a little bit of zip tie magic just to kind of keep this there. And now, we all set. I love how many separate pieces that have come together to make up this car. And a good portion of those pieces are all OEM things, which is pretty cool. Oh boy, we got a wild golf coming in. Now that this car is bagged and has fancy new wheels on it, we'll probably take the R32 and Miley out for a photo shoot together soon. So we have one last thing to do. So when my car arrived here from the States, I don't know what happened, but this one was missing. So I have these ones. These are out of a Mark V, I wanna say. This is nice little chrome pieces that you cut and you fit. It's a nice little touch to go with the rest of the pieces in the car. I don't like the chrome bits, whatever. But when a car got here, it was gone. I looked over the entire car and I have no idea where it went. So I had a friend of mine um, a while back send me another set. You can see I got them sitting here. So we'll go ahead and swap these in that way. I mean, I think it's been gone for like a year and a half now. So I guess I might as well put a new one in there. And just like that, we're back in business. I think I'm gonna end it off here. This video has been long enough, I think. But it's so cool to have this car side by side. 1997 Volkswagen Jetta, 1997 Volkswagen Vento. I could honestly spend an entire day going back and forth and showing you all the different little pieces of these cars. I mean, honestly, I've pulled apart 30 or 40 Mark III's at this point, and they all have such little differences. It's hard to figure out why they did some things. Um, which is kind of cool, like, like this. This car has the long skinny nozzles where my car had the fat square ones. And also I noticed on this car, it has the fuzzy door cards, but this one has the all reds. Whereas my car, and mine came out of Avento as well, but in my car, I have the red and clear. So there's just a whole bunch of just little differences between these cars that I think is super fascinating. But that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Do not forget, be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.